Today's an opportunity for some of the most interesting young researchers to deliver their ideas in five minutes, a very hard thing to do, but to get them across to get maximum attention for their own research and their own work. And at the same time, they have to make it captivating to us so that we're engaged and we can ask them more. My current project is investigating how humanity has harnessed the power of the sun. And as Richard was saying, particularly the roles played by literature, art and culture in general in imagining, mythologising and reflecting the possibilities of solar technology. We wanted to look at how research in the humanities and the sciences can interact, not just borrow from one another but genuinely collaborate. We want to see how it's possible for each to inform the other. So we put out a call and we asked people, can you deliver your idea in five minutes? And we were amazed at the number of applications we had. So today we've chosen what we think are the most interesting presenters and we'll see how they do. So magic is a performance art uh, which unfortunately has been relegated to this sort of thing uh, in recent years. There's my dad there. Um, uh, but it has its roots kind of in theatre practice and both theatre and magic began as a kind of exploration of, of the world beyond the human. We're looking at uh, how we interact with animals, the way in which we as humans have always depended on and interacted with them. We're looking at art and art therapies. We're looking at how we've understood light and its technology through changes in history. We're looking at how music and the very practice of singing uh, might do something very special to us in the way that it engages particular parts of the brain that are therapeutic and healing. We developed a research song as well, a novel way of reporting the outcomes. Um, so I'll end with, um, so we all love the celebration choir. <laughs> it's a huge range of ideas and information on show today. Well, this is our exhibition about the uh, chickens and people, sort of past, present and future. And what we've got here are two lovely skeletons, one from a, a chicken that represents really archaeological chickens, how they used to look in the past. And then when we've got this here, this broiler chicken. And between these two, it shows us how far chickens have come through time and have been transformed through their interactions with people. Present day chickens like this broiler here have been genetically engineered to the point that there's very little variation in them, which means that it wouldn't take too much for much of modern commercial stock to be wiped out. It's a food crisis waiting to happen and that's something that we're hoping to halt by using arts and humanities research. Why this research is important is because when we have the techniques and the scientific methods to explore and investigate, we often find scientists today saying, I need a wider context, I need to know how to locate this research in a wider history. We also have to know whether we're reinventing the wheel as some of the things that we're doing now, simply recapitulating something that was already learned from the way we addressed issues in the past. Well, I'm an astronomer and I work with about a million people around the world to classify galaxies, sort out uh, planets and maybe even classify animals on the Serengeti. But I'm here because we needed help from historians to understand how to work with such a large crowd and how to collaborate with people who aren't stuck in academia. And I'm working with Chris because I've been working on what we now retrospectively call citizen science in the 19th century, where at a time before the professional divide between professional and amateur, a lot of the data was provided by people completely outside the scientific field. So understanding how that operated and how they used scientific journals to communicate their findings and hoping that this will then help Chris in his work to think about how to communicate with professional scientists and the lay public. Think of big data. We tend to think this is a new problem of gathering information. But in the humanities, we've always had big data. We have huge libraries, huge amounts of information, artifacts, paintings, records that we have to collect and curate. So by making scientists really talk meaningfully about what they're doing and having humanities researchers, historians, help them to understand the future through the past, I think there's a way in which we can understand, manage and probably advance knowledge in a much better way. We are looking at sensory perception and multi-sensory perception in a very new and wonderful way, I think. We get to work with artists and chefs and musicians um, and philosophers, because I'm, as the neuroscientists, are trying to understand questions about how we perceive the world around us um, in a real way, or in a, perhaps a more real way than we have done perhaps in the past as neuroscientists in our little labs. So instead, we're taking beautiful pieces of art, like this Patrick Hughes here, 
and we are trying to understand, in this particular case, how the brain processes uh, conflicting depth perception signals. So if you stood further back, uh, even your camera in a 2D representation of this would see these Venetian buildings over here sway madly from side to side if you swayed which you wouldn't see if you stepped behind, they'd be jumping out at you. So uh, it's a case where the, the subjective perception very much is different to what is objectively represented on the canvas. I think we're really hoping too that today we'll throw up some new ideas. I think from the younger generation of researchers who are perhaps wandering across discipline boundaries, picking up information from many different fields at once, the idea that they might stumble upon something which is just the beginning, the germ of an idea, but here getting some attention and getting some interest, we might turn up the heat and it might take off. So I'm hoping this will be a platform for new research agendas.